Kia ora my brothers and sisters, I'm Celestial Serpent and today I've got the, the privilege of being here with Michael Tallinger. Michael's doing some amazing stuff, he's an author, a lecturer and now he's getting into politics, isn't that right? Well, you know, sooner or later we got to address that. We do. Because politics affects our lives and has become by <laughs> everyone's perception at this stage, it seems, a dirty, disgusting, corrupt business. Yeah. So the, the, the question is, do we allow a dirty, disgusting, corrupt aspect of society to control our lives or do we get involved and change it? That's right. And that seems to be what you're doing with the Ubuntu movement and everything. Yeah. So maybe you could tell us a bit, a bit about the big picture, about where we're heading, and then we can digress to what we're going to do to get there. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, Matt. The, I think it, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that what we have in the world today doesn't work. The systems we yeah. have don't work. Yeah. Uh, people everywhere live in misery. There's uh, just unhappiness everywhere. We work like slaves to survive. We're all slaves to the system. So it's, uh, it's obvious to see that whatever we've done for the last 6,000 years or so has not worked. Yeah, that's, and the, that's for sure. And the current socio-political systems do not serve us. They've, they've somehow been manipulated to enslave us. And, um, and we need to find a way to get out of it. Uh, and t unfortunately, to get out of it, we need to first recognize and understand what has happened over the last few thousand years that brought us here. That's right. Once we know the path has brought, that brought us here and the sequence of events, then it's much easier to figure out what it is what we need to do into the future. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what I've been doing the last 20 years is, is studying and, and uh, lo even longer is looking to the origins of humankind, mm -hmm. where we come from, what has happened and, and what brought us here. And it, it's uh, very obvious uh, to anyone that does the research that money has become the slavery tool. It's not about the money, it's about money being used as a tool to enslave the people. That's right. So uh, what the Ubuntu movement does is, is really to teach and inform people about the money system, the origins of money, how it has become the tool of enslavement it is today, and what we need to do to rid ourselves of the money, to create a future society of abundance and prosperity without the need for any kind of money. Mm, yeah, and, and, you're, and you're some of the systems, some of the ideas are so simple, but they're so powerful. And, and even just looking at the concept of owning property and people renting that property and, and how that extrapolates into a whole world of problems and hierarchy and the poor and the rich. Like, like some of these concepts that you've, that you've explained through your books, through your works, they're, they're so simple that it just kind of gives us a bit of hope and the intricate system that they've built that you know we've we've got a path out of here it's the simplicity of the solutions that often uh, trips us up yeah. and that makes people go no no that sounds too simple and exactly it is that simple yeah and one of the problems we face is all our lives we've been told that you know it's life is not easy uh, it's tough to survive you got to work hard to survive and you got to work hard to get to the top and you got to compete to be the best and all these are all lies and part of the enslavement system that we've been indoctrinated with to make us believe that life is tough well life shouldn't be tough we live on a planet of abundance mm -hmm. and we collectively are capable of creating in immeasurable abundance that serves the people and serves us as the human race and not serve a few that control the many yeah absolutely yeah it's 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 as simple as that and, and and if we start to look at the mathematics of things break it down into geometry break it down to numbers then we can see that the current system is certainly not serving those under the, the lower ranks of that pyramidal structure but we can use our knowledge of geometry and mathematics to create uh, <laughs> prosperity. Absolutely. We get some competition from the birds behind us. Oh, that's I, all right. Uh, uh, they're giving us a, a nice backing. They're contributing. Yeah. They've got a lot to say as well. They're, but the bird kingdom's been messed up <laughs> for 6,000 years as well. <laughs> the backing vocalists. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so just to really outline is the, you know, the Ubuntu philosophy. Ubuntu is an African word which means uh, uh, roughly translated into I am who I am or what I am because of who we all are. Mm, it's nice. an inclusive system. 
unity within community, creating abundance within your community by collaborating and cooperating and not competing. Mm -hmm. That's and nice. It's a whole other energy when you're just looking how you can benefit one another and not trying to not trying to get ahead of the next guy. And you know. It's, yes. Exactly. So. That simple. And uh, and so we've taken the philosophy from a grassroots ground up community project community development philosophy into the political arena and got the Ubuntu party as a political front which is really an outlet for the grassroots philosophy on a political level and uh, so it's a top-down bottom-up approach and uh, we've done it in South Africa in 2014 we ran uh, in the national elections for Parliament and then uh, now our main focus is to get involved in the local municipal elections in 2016 and use a completely opposite approach to go after the 12 smallest towns in South Africa and win at least one of those towns so that we can implement this very simple Ubuntu philosophy mm. in that town and then use that as the flagship to resonate this philosophy throughout not just South Africa but right across the world which will probably yeah. happen within days and weeks of us being successful in South Africa with that. That's a domino effect, Dave. Eh? And the domino effect doesn't just happen in one direction. It happens in yeah. all directions, fractally. You know? Yeah, it's like a ripple. It's a you know. And, yeah. And, and really, and again, it's using this 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 knowledge of fractals. If your if your intentions are pure on a small level, the bigger this things grow, the more potential for abundance. Absolutely. Unlike some of the current models, which there's just not enough work, there's not enough, everything's not enough. No, and, and, and just, you know, people that are confused by this, the capitalist model is really, that's, that's what it is. The capitalism is, it creates a, a platform of scarcity because the, 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 what, whatever we create is controlled by corporations and governments and it's drip fed to the people as the slaves that produce and create the things for the corporations and the governments. So, and if you don't earn money, you can't get access to the food or the clothes or the, or the accommodation or whatever it is we mm. need, technology. So this turns everything upside down and we create everything for ourselves in abundance as much as of it as we need. We live on a planet of abundance and by doing this, we pretty much join this uh, cycle of abundance and the laws of nature that create abundance because one apple tree doesn't grow one more apple tree. One apple tree grows a thousand apple trees. Yeah. And that's what we do. Uh, in the workshop the other day, somebody did the calculation that three hours a week contributing, three hours a week to the community projects, which incidentally is the model that we propose, is mm -hmm. that everyone contributes three hours a week towards one of the community projects. That is equivalent to 30, one year of that is equivalent to 31 years of labor in a normal society. Wow, the numbers don't lie as well, <laughs> yeah. eh? Numbers don't lie. Yeah. That's why we love them so much. Yeah. It's important again for people that watch this, uh, this video is to understand our plan of action. As you said earlier, it is so simple that it really boggles the mind. Mm. So this is really in a nutshell the bullet point. Uh, bullet points of plan of action. <clears throat> we run in the elections. We win one of the small towns and municipalities. We then, as the, as the ruling municipality, implement the plan. And the plan is based on the sharing and the distribution of free electricity. So our promise to the people in this political campaign is free electricity to all the people in our town. Why can we say this? Because we have access to the scientists and the technology that can provide free electricity to all the people in our town. So we unplug those that provide the grid electricity and we plug ourselves in. At the moment, we are promoting and going after hydro uh, electricity, so putting uh, hydro um, uh, turbines into the rivers that run through our towns. And it just so happens that the four towns in my municipality each has a river. And, but there's other technology available as well. Yeah, uh, yeah having, having said that, like, this man has got a lot of interesting work about zero-point technology or, you know, free energy. And we're not even touching on that. We're, we're, we're relating to everyone out here with the currently existing and available technology. Yeah. But there is a lot out there. Yeah, so, you know, I don't want to go into what some people would see as conspiracy or whatever. Let's stick to the tried and tested technology. Hydro yeah. turbine technology, 
works perfectly. We've got access to hydro turbines that are many times more efficient than the current turbine technology. That's the benefit we have. So we can provide our own electricity supply. Once we've paid for it to put it in and it's installed by our electrical engineers, it works for us, the people of our town. Remember, the, the country belongs to its people. The government is supposed to be the servant of the people. The towns belong to its people. Mm -hmm. And the municipality and the mayor is supposed to be the servant of the people. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to serve the people and give the people what they want. And our whole manifesto on the local elections is free electricity for all. That becomes a foundation for all the community projects because it's our electricity. Everybody gets free electricity. But you've got to, in return, contribute three hours a week towards one of those community projects. They're well managed, well structured, well planned, well coordinated, and each community project is structured so it creates three times as much as what we need in our community. And this is where the abundance starts to become obvious mm. and, and apparent. Where once we've consumed the one third for our community, and if you contribute your three hours a week, you have access to everything that we manufacture and we create. It's free to you because you've done your three hours a week. So bread, milk, cheese, wood products, fish, mushrooms, whatever it is we do, food, everything, um, is free. So suddenly you go from living in a community that you have to pay for everything to living in a community that everything is available to us for free because we make it, we create it. The money to set up the community projects comes from government because now as the mayor, I have channel and funnel the money from government into the various community projects to set it up to work. Then all the money that we then make from the excess that we make, the two-thirds that we don't consume, we make available at a fraction of the price or the cost to the neighboring communities. So the people are going to be buying up all our stuff because they get it cheaper from us than any Walmart or any other supermarket because we do it ourselves as a collaborative which will make it really, really affordable. Mm, not to mention the intention of love and people really yes. putting their love into it rather than like, you know, numbers and time is money type of mentality. Exactly. So the consequence of this is that automatically we start undermining the capitalist model of all our neighboring towns. And it becomes very difficult for them to survive on a capitalistic model. And they'll have to Im implement very quickly the same model that we have. And I don't think it's going to have, you don't have to force the, the people to do that because they're going to want to do that because they also want free, everything free for their own community. They're going to see how you do it. They go, wow, we also want that. We want free electricity. We want everything for free because we're working together. So this is literally, it's like a snowball effect. It just, it is a, 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 an exponential growth that just goes in all directions. That's it, man. It's very perpetual and... Yeah, I, I like a lot of what, you, what you've talked about, about as well, about our cultures being really squashed, a lot of the music, a lot of the arts, yeah. and the passion, where what the people are passionate about. And, it's, and a, lot, a lot of the time now, there's this connotation that the artists and the musicians and the creative types aren't contributing, yet you know, what, what they represent is, is, is also the heart of the culture. Yeah, well, in, in the society where we're heading with... Uh or towards with the Ubuntu philosophy is ultimately a completely moneyless society. We don't need money of any kind, where everything is available to everyone in our community because that's what we do. And if we need something else, then we create a community project to do that, to build it or create it. So everything is possible. Let your mind run wild. No, there are no restrictions. Money is no longer a hurdle to anything. Our scientists will develop new technologies, new materials, new ways of doing things, new ways of building, new way of transport, new way of levitation, mm. <clears throat> new way of everything that we do right now. The moment you remove money from the system, mm. everything changes. There's a complete paradigm shift. It's like taking the pyramid of hierarchical control and turning it upside down. And everything becomes possible and available to everyone. So that means that if we want to create a new uh, music school with the latest technology and sound and music and instruments, the best instruments will be provided. The best instruments will be made and created by the artisans and the makers that make the tools and the instruments. We'll build the best film school, the best theatres, the best performing halls, uh, the best sculptor uh, studios. So the expression in art, artistic and cultural activities is, is unimaginable in a capitalistic world. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it opens a whole lot of doors, that's, that's for sure. 
and I, and I know the position that we're in right now, kind of transitioning into this. It's like that that old saying: you got to have money to make money. And yeah. right now, and I, and I know you, you know it's it's hard for people to ask for money and stuff. And and, and I'd like to, to 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 take the position and and saying that this project needs money to get off the ground to get into into the position of being the mayor and and, and able to to allow all this to happen. When we're looking for was was it was it a hundred or two hundred thousand in the electorate budget? Well, we're looking at two hundred thousand uh, dollars to run the political campaign. <laughs> To uh, we're looking at 12 small towns, 12 small municipalities, yeah. which is probably between 50 and 60 towns. So it's the printing of posters, it's the transport, it's the yeah. banners and all that. The running our office, the people who run it, the uh, all those costs. It's it's in essence, it's probably it's probably going to allow us to run a very successful campaign. Yeah. The outcome of this is going to be that we will, if we get this kind of funding, when we get this kind of funding, yeah. we will be able to win at least one municipality because it's very easy to reach 10,000 or 20,000 people in a small town, much easier than to reach 20 million people in a big city. And this is why we're going for this. We go, it's the Achilles heel approach, right? Yeah. Injecting the little tiny virus into the beast. When they le where they least expect it, and it's tiny. This tiny little town in South Africa will be the virus of consciousness that brings down the global capitalist model of control over humanity. I just love that idea. I That'll love it. spread overnight across the borders into all the countries of the world, and thousands of towns will probably adopt a similar model very, very quickly. Well, it would definitely be in their their best interest to to, to start looking at some of these concepts and seeing how they can. They can benefit the whole. They can benefit every person that is part of the whole and contributes to the whole. Yeah. Uh, what I'd like to add to this as well, She's Matt, is up. is um, is that uh, you know there is a plan of action. It's not just a haphazard mm. uh, organisation. We've been doing this for ten years now, putting the step, the the pieces of the puzzle together. The last. Um, Five years we've been building the Ubuntu party as a political party. We've now participated in the national elections in 2014. That was a, 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 a baptism by fire for us, understanding how corrupt the political system is. And then learning from our experiences and implementing it now two years later in the local municipal elections where we now are very strategic about our plan of action, very strategic about what we want to do and how we're going to achieve our goals. And going at the you know the smallest towns, which I believe is the Achilles heel approach. Yeah. So there's a plan of action. It is not only doable; it is achievable. And uh, and I'd like the people to um, to look at this as the spearhead of this global movement and the global philosophy that mm. has presented itself right now in 2016 to allow us to pierce the veil of the global control, break through it, and provide provide us with that one example, one, one town that will be the inspiration and the model for, for everyone around the world. Yeah, absolutely, that's what it's the butterfly effect, eh? It's like that, um, I think the, the, the monkey, there's, there's a few very variations of this, but it's talking about the metaphysical nature of consciousness and like these, these monkeys, you know, for, for years have been in eating these roots directly from the ground or covered in sand and, and dirt and whatnot and this one monkey goes out and starts washing it in the water and then like you know the other monkeys start catching on and then on other islands that aren't connected you see the same thing and it's it's the hundred monkey syndrome yeah, hundred, yeah there we go hundredth monkey syndrome that's <laughs> hundredth it. monkey syndrome that's yeah and that's exactly what this is so it's exciting times so you know for people that want to participate in this and help us with the the the, the fundraising as you said, I hate asking for money, but this is a political campaign. It's not money that's going into my pocket or buying me a fancy car. It's about nitty-gritty, hard costs on the ground uh, to make this campaign possible. So we're looking at raising $200,000. If you can help in any way, go to our website, uh, ubuntuparty.org.za. There's a donate uh, button there. And, uh, and uh, help us out. That's it, you know, if you, if, you, if you believe in what this man's doing, I encourage everyone that's seeing this video to have a look into it and, and look at these bullet points, look at the plans. And uh, you've even admitted, you don't know with how, how big this is going to get, how this is going to unfold, but you know, got, got the, the next part of the journey yeah. fairly solid. And, it, and anyone that wants to be part of this and help dawn on this new world, 
this is a product, this is a, a, a project that, need, that needs funding, that needs more energy funneled into it in order to, to grow. Oh, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. <laughs> thanks, thanks for your time, my brother. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cheers, bro. <laughs> much love, guys. Woo.